Hello, in this screencast I'll be walking you through the installation of the Ventcentric version 3.4. First we can pick the installation directory of course, and then we're presented with the component list. The built-in database is a great way to get started with Ventcentric without having to worry about installing a separate database, database server, or even connecting to an existing production database. You can also connect to a cloud-based database, for example Azure or AWS. The web reports is the visual interface to all the data that Eventsentry gathers. I'm talking about dashboards, uh, search queries, uh, reports, jobs, that sort of thing. So in most cases you'll want to install the web reports. Eventsentry can collect uh, a fair amount of data depending on how many hosts you monitor and also depending on your audit settings as well as your Eventsentry configuration, whether you collect audit success events, for example. So here you can pick the data folder uh, for your built-in database. So by default, this is a subdirectory of the event Entry installation directory, but you can really point this to any uh, sort of directory or drive uh, where you have sufficient disk space. So if uh, you don't have a lot of disk space on the C drive, uh, but have another drive available, then recommend that you change that. If you plan on using the collector, which in most cases you'll want to use the collector, you don't have to create a firewall rule to allow database traffic from external hosts. So we'll, uh, I'm going to set this to no here and proceed. Here you'll be picking uh, the password for the administrative Postgres user account for the built-in database. Make sure you pick something secure and also make sure that you note down this password because you are going to need it every time you install a new version or upgrade to a new version of the entry. Finally, you can pick the port for the web reports so by default, we're picking 8080 here. If you already have another application listening or bound support 8080, we'll want to pick something different. So in this case, I have nothing running on port 80, so I'm just going to pick port 80 here, and I'm going to um, create a firewall rule so that um, external hosts can actually access the web reports, which in most cases uh, you will want to do. And that's it for the first part of the installation. Uh, and then will now unpack all the files, install them, it will download the web reports unless you already downloaded them ahead of time. And after the installation is complete, the second phase of the installation will begin where the configuration system will essentially uh, let you configure events and tree, the initial configuration based on your requirements. I'm going to fast forward through this part so you don't have to watch uh, a few minutes of installation here. So the first part of the event center installation is now complete, and upon hitting finish, the second part will commence, which is the configuration assistant. The first question is going to ask you is whether you want to receive email alerts. So for this, for this demonstration, I'll leave the default settings here in place. We'll leave medium, which means I'll be getting email alerts from uh, event entry alerts only. So any sort of discrepancy that event entry detects, such as low disk space, uh, high performance, etc is going to get emailed to us. It's also a limit to 10 emails per hour, so you will never get more than 10 emails per hour. When you pick medium, you have uh, the ability to customize this a little further. So if you say, you know what, I want to receive system errors, for example, as well, if there's a corrupt disk and things like that, then you can enable this as well. You are probably going to get more emails, though, in that case. And you're going to have to exclude them, because uh, even though we have a pretty extensive list of exclusions in place to filter out the noise. Um, there's just too many different uh, applications uh, out there in the, in the field uh, to come to really comprehensively filter them all out. Here we're just going to specify the mail server. So we have a test domain here. We're just going to specify a test recipient here. Ventsentry uh, lets you pick the password for the two uh, user accounts, the database user accounts that we're creating that Ventsentry uses. One is used by the agents and the collector, and one is used by the reporting. This first user account is write access to the database, whereas the second user account only has read access to the database. Um, it's usually the easiest to just hit the generate button here and move on. The database purge lets you determine, uh, lets you decide how long you want to keep store the data in the database. So the default here is 30 days and every 9 to 11 p.m. it's going to run a purge job that deletes any data that's older than 30 days. 
A max database size field lets you determine how big the database can get before you're going to receive an alert by event entry. It does not limit the size of the database because that would result in data loss. But if you specify 10 gigs here, you will get an alert if the size of the database folder exceeds 10 gigabytes. Perfect monitor essentially uh, monitors remote hosts with through ping, uh, TCP, as well as SNMP. So if you want to make sure that the server is running event entry, you know devices, switches, routers, sprinters, etc. are up and running, and you want to enable the heartbeat monitor. Picking up the local system account is usually sufficient if you're running the collector service. Syslog and SNMP monitoring, this component will receive uh, syslog messages from remote hosts. So if you have your network devices or Linux, Linux machines configured to send syslog, then you can point them to event entry, and event entry will store those syslog messages. And the same goes for SNMP traps. So if you have your UPSs, etc., that send traps, then you can point them to its event entry, and event entry will store those traps and alert you when they're received based on uh, your configuration, your rules, of course. Finally, we have the collector service. So the collector service pretty much is uh, recommended in almost all cases. It allows encryption, uh, compression between the agents and the collector service, and the collector also manages configuration updates and agent updates. So whenever you install a patch on your network, a new version of event entry, then the collector will automatically update all the remote hosts. For example, that means that you can install event entry on laptops, and no matter where they are in the world, as long as they have a connection with the collector, the collector will ensure that, of course, all traffic is encrypted and compressed, and that the remote agent is kept up to date, so when there's a new uh, version of the agent available on the collector side, it will send it to the remote agent and it will update itself, and any configuration changes will be deployed by the collector automatically. So I'm just going to hit next. And that's it. The installation is complete. We're going to click finish and launch the config management console. And that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching.